All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Barnabas Summit. I know you might still be wrapping up with dinner or your dessert. Um, if I haven't gotten the chance to meet you yet, my name is Austin Payne. Um, I get to work with the associates here. We have a, a kind of a brand new program within the Barnabas Group called the Associates Program, where we're working with some younger leaders. But um, we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But to start tonight, we're going to do something that I don't believe has ever been done at a Barnabas group before. But in the middle of your tables, um, there's one of these. It's a, a piece of paper in the middle of your table. It might be underneath your bread basket, but it, uh, it's got a little Barnabas logo there in the corner. And then on the top of it, it says, are you smarter than a fifth grader? So to start tonight, we're going we're gonna to do a little, a little competition here, a little friendly competition in the room. And here's the deal. Hey, so look around at the people at your table. That is your team for this competition. And collectively as a team, you're gonna try to figure out whether or not you are smarter as a table than a fifth grader. And we have prizes, okay? So here are the, here's your first place prize, your second place prize, and your third place prize. Third place prize, do I have any Starbucks fans in the room? Any Starbucks? Okay, all three of you. Fantastic, okay? So, uh, third place will be taking home a Barnabas mug, a custom Barnabas mug with a $5 Starbucks gift card in it. Okay. Second place tonight, um, we're going to be hearing from a ministry called Families Set Free tonight. And second place, uh, it's incredible what this ministry can do with $200. And so second place, you're going to hear more about this in just a little bit. But you're actually, as a table, Barnabas is going to donate $200 to Families Set Free on your behalf as a table. Um, so that's cool. You're going to hear about that a little bit more in a minute. And then first place tonight, um, y'all know Russ and Gina Klein, right? The, the, best, the best people in the room, in my opinion. Okay, no offense. But um, Russ and Gina, they've been hosting these dinners for Barnabas. And um, your table, as a table, you're going to get to RSVP for a dinner with Russ and Gina in their home. Um, so they've been sending out these RSVPs. Some of you have already attended those dinners, but your table is going to get the opportunity to sign up for one of those dinners um, in the future, in the near future. So you all ready to play a little trivia game? Okay. All right. Here we go. So question one, you need, to, you need to choose one person at your table as kind of your spokesperson to write down the answers to these questions. Um, you'll notice that there's a few bonus questions on there. So the first round of this game is going to be 12 possible points. If we go into overtime, we do have some overtime questions as well. If, if we need them, um, we'll go to sudden death. But question number one is, what is the longest river in the United States? What is the longest river in the United States? Oh, thank you, Todd Gorton, for thinking like a cheater, okay? Um, you actually cannot use your smartphone for this activity, okay? You need to use your smart brain, not your smartphone. So please do not reach for your devices. No Googling. You cannot ask Siri. Please do not use your smart devices. Thank you, Todd Gorton. Okay. Hopefully you've written down an answer. If not, scribble something down right now. You got five seconds. Four, three, two. The answer is the Missouri River. How many of you put the Mississippi? Okay, it's kind of like the Mississippi, except not. Okay, it's the Missouri River. Question number two. Peanuts are not nuts. They are fill in the blank. Okay, here's another little hint. You probably shouldn't say the answer out loud so the rest of the room can hear you, okay? It's just a hint. Might want to speak quietly enough so it's just your table, you know? You want to win that first place dinner with Russ and Gina. And since the whole room said it at the same time, it is legumes, okay? Legumes. Question number three. We're going to get a little bit more tricky here. How many states, how many U.S. states does the state Vermont border bonus point if you can name them? How many states does Vermont border bonus point if you can name them?
Okay, you got 10 seconds. 10 seconds to write down your answer. Think back to fifth grade geography. Visualize that United States map. Hopefully you have somebody from the New England area at your table. The answer is three. It's New York, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Wow, okay, I see some applause out there. Some of you got that. At table 16, we see you. We see you, table 16. All right, next question. The interior angles of a triangle always sum up to what degree? Think back to fifth grade mathematics. Maybe you have a homeschooling mom at your table. The answer is 180 degrees. Wow, okay, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Table 16 is still cheering. Okay, we see you, table 16. Next question. Who is the author of the 1960 novel about social and racial inequality, To Kill a Mockingbird? Most of you have read it. Do you remember who wrote it? Ten seconds on the clock. For those of you that are missing your nightly fix of Jeopardy, hopefully this helps you out. Scratch the itch. Hey, the answer to this question is Harper Lee. Table 16? Uh, okay, all right, 24. Okay, 24. Okay, table 5. Okay, okay, table 4. We see you, Gina. All right, next question. How many amendments are in the Bill of Rights? Category, social studies. How many amendments? The correct answer is not all of them. Hey, five seconds. Help your people out. Go team, go. The correct answer is 10. 10 amendments in the Bill of Rights. Congratulations to those of you out there. Next question. Which blood type is known as the universal recipient? Not the universal donor, the universal recipient. Maybe you have a doctor at your table. Maybe you have a blood donor at your table. A frequenter of the Red Cross. 10 seconds on the clock. The correct answer is, is, AB positive. AB positive. Well done, table 23. Michael Jordan, okay? We see you. Some of you might be put IB positive. IB positive that you are not donating any of your blood. You hate needles, right? It's a quote from Bruce Almighty. Okay, question number eight. Identify the predicate in this sentence. The dog is running in the yard. What is the predicate of that sentence? English majors, where are you? <laughs> this doesn't help if your table all ask the question, what's a predicate? Okay, the answer what is the predicate in this sentence is running in the yard. A predicate is the part of a sentence or clause containing a verb and stating something about the subject. Running in the yard. Did anybody get that one right? 
Anybody in the room? Okay, table 23, table 24. Table 16? Table 15. Well done, well done. Okay, next question. In which country are the most languages spoken? In which country are the most languages spoken? In which country are the most languages spoken? Ten seconds on the clock. In which country are the most languages spoken? The answer is, I'll be very impressed if somebody gets the right answer to this question. Papua New Guinea. Okay. All right. Well done. Well done. There are actually about 100, 850 languages spoken in Papua New Guinea. There's a lot of Bible translation happening in Papua New Guinea because of this. Okay. Which ancient civilization built Machu Picchu? And I will be even more impressed if you get the bonus point, if you can name what this ancient civilization called themselves. What did they call themselves? Okay. Which ancient civilization built Machu Picchu? Opportunity for a bonus point here. The Daily Double, if you will. Ten seconds. The answer to who built... Has anybody in the room been to Machu Picchu? Okay, all right. You lucky ducks. Okay, hopefully one day. The answer is the Incas. And the bonus is Tawantansuyu, which means the four regions. Did anybody get the bonus point? Okay, I figured, I figured not. I figured not, okay? Uh, believe it or not, they do teach us in fifth grade, okay? Um, okay, before we get to overtime, here's what I need you to do. I need you to total up your points that you have. There a total possible 12 points. If you got the perfect score, you would have 12 points. And I'm just going to have the, the representative at your table, the person that was writing down the answers to those questions. I need the representatives at the table to stand to your feet if you got at least three points. At least three points. Representative at your table, stand up. Stand up to your feet. At least three points. Okay. All right. All right. Stay standing if you got five points. Stay standing if you got seven points. There were, there were 12 points, one point for a bonus. One point for a bonus, okay? Seven points. Okay, all right. Eight points. Goodbye, Nehemiah. Nine points. Okay, standing. Do we only have three people standing right now? Okay, how many points did you guys get? Nine points? Nine points? Nine points. So here's the deal. We are going to determine a first place with just you three tables. We're going to overtime here. Now, the rest of you in the room, if you want to participate at your table, participate at the table. But between the three of you, here's what we're going to need to do. Okay? So you three that just stood up to your feet, this is not only whether or not you know the right answer to these questions, it's how fast can you come up with the answer to these questions. So here's how you're going to let me know that you, are, that you have the right answer to this question. Those, those of you that just were standing, you need to stand back up to your feet when you know the right answer to the next question. First person to their feet has the opportunity to answer. If you get it right, you get first place. Capiche? Makes sense? Okay, here we go. Question number one. Russ, can you help me referee here? Can you, can you, you, you have the sharp eyes. Who's, who stood up first, okay? Question number one is, what is the only edible food that never goes bad? Honey, it is honey. Congratulations. 
Your table just got first place and an invitation to Russ and Gina's house for dinner. So it's down to these two tables, okay? Stand up to your feet if you know the answer to these questions. Overtime, question number two. We're looking for speed and accuracy here. Question number two. Oh, that's the answer, honey. Congratulations. Well done. What was the name of the last queen of France? <laughs> Table 23, do you have a guess? Table, I can't see your number. 19? Is it 19? Do you guys have a guess? Do you want, do you want to skip? Do, do you both want to skip? Okay, the answer is Marie Antoinette. You should have stood to your feet if you had an answer. I'm just saying. The real, the, it's table 16, they just want everybody to know that they knew the answer to that question, okay? Table 16, y'all are smart. Okay, here we go. Next one. How many countries are in Africa? My man. It, the answer is 54. Wow. Well done. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. So second place, you guys will be, table 23, you guys will be donating to families set free tonight. And then table nine, is it 19? I still can't really see your number. I'll bring you over your mugs with the Starbucks gift cards. Well done, bronze medal for our, thank you guys for participating. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? We had a lot of fun. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we got a little video for you guys to check out. We want you to see it. Check out this video. Hey Barnabas, my name's Austin Payne. I'm the director of the Barnabas Associates program. And my first exposure to Barnabas was in 2019 when Russ Klein invited me to come and attend a summit. And I fell in love with this community that was these business professionals with a mind for God's global kingdom to see uh, his kingdom expand both here in Orange County and, and all the way around the world. And this last year we launched an associates program where our mission is to preserve the mission and vision of Barnabas itself by engaging the next generation of kingdom-minded philanthropists and young professionals. And here today, we're at SoFi Stadium. You can see it behind me. We, uh, we get to do these events uh, throughout the year with just the Associates program, where uh, we're coming and we're serving our local community. Today, we're doing a, a full behind the scenes tour of the, the SoFi Stadium and going into the locker rooms and kicking field goals and playing on the field. And But really today, we're talking about marketing strategies. We're talking about excellence. We're seeing how SoFi Stadium was placed in the middle of Inglewood and the impact that it's having on the surrounding area. And so today, we're just having a little bit of fun. We're checking it out. We're having cool conversations. So come on in, let's check it out. Blessy and I'm a senior sales manager for PepsiCo. Hi, I'm Nehemiah Gross, uh, currently working at uh, Chick-fil-A in Oceanside as an executive director. Hey there, I'm Blake Nyman. Uh, I own a content production agency as well as some salons. I wanted to join Barnabas because I've been in corporate America for 11 years and sometimes it's a really dark place and I was just looking to connect with other professionals. Um, that were faith-based and wanted to use their work to glorify God and bring his gospel to the lost people of the workforce. So I've been a part of the Barnabas program for only a few months, but uh, already met some great people, um, been connected to a great mentor, and you know, it's, it's been a, a fantastic experience and exactly what I've been looking for. If you're a young professional in Orange County, I would say you should absolutely join the Barnabas Group just because of the vast um, network of people, not just for helping you out in your career, but just the difference in people and relationships that you can learn from and interact with both professionally and personally. I think it's easy to, to be a part of a, a small community that is, you know, 
maybe even Oceanside at Chick-fil-A where it's easy to kind of fall into that mundane life of you know work, sleep, operations, and repeat. But joining Barnabas has really kind of opened my eyes to actually a lot of the different things that are going on in, in Southern California, whether that's Oceanside, you know, Orange County, there's a lot of things that are going on that I didn't specifically know about. But getting plugged into Barnabas has really opened my eyes to what ministries are taking place and what things that they're doing in the community. If you're a young professional in Orange County, I would encourage you to join Barnabas because there's so many people who have gone before you that are a part of this program. And being in that room on the summit days, seeing how many people are like-minded and trying to use their gifts and talents to further the kingdom is so inspirational. And it spurs you on to do the work that you've been called to do in the workforce. Uh, I highly encourage you to join Barnabas because um, it's a great community full of uh, people looking to push themselves, grow, learn. Um, there's a great mentorship program and um, you know, I'm happy to be a part of it. We had a blast today hanging out as a community. We laughed together, we kicked some long field goals, we missed some long field goals. And here's where you come in. If you have a son or a daughter, maybe a grandson, granddaughter, an employee, nephew, niece, somebody that you know would benefit from being a part of the Associates program, we would love to engage with you. We believe wholeheartedly in the Barnabas Group and our mission and vision is to preserve the mission of Barnabas by engaging with the next generation. We would love to meet you today. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a blast. Uh, since August, I've been working with Russ and the Barnabas Group to launch this track for young professionals and young philanthropists in the workplace here in Orange County. And, and here's where I just want to engage with you again, Barnabas. As, as I said in the video, you sitting in this room, we need you. That you have an employee or a nephew or a niece, maybe a grandson, a granddaughter that you know would benefit from being a part of the Barnabas Group, from being in this room in the summits. And the Associates Program, really, we don't want this to be a siloed aspect of Barnabas. We're not trying to launch something for uh, the next generation, for these young leaders that, that runs parallel to Barnabas. We really want it to be a part of this community. And, and we want to bring young professionals into this room and interact and engage. And so um, the the Barnabas Associates program is really threefold. Number one, uh, it's this, it's the summits, it's everything that, that Barnabas offers, it's the consultations outside, um, the, the networking breakfasts and all of that. And so the, the Barnabas Associates program merges into what Barnabas is already doing. Number two, we offer mentoring and coaching. And so some of you in this room are Barnabas mentors, you are Barnabas coaches. Every one of our associates gets matched with a mentor from this room and somebody that'll just walk through life with them and share their wisdom and share um, some of the mistakes that they've made along the way. And I love the way uh, John put it. He said it's, it's kind of this co-mentoring, that sometimes it's us learning from each other and, and getting to, to go out to a breakfast or a coffee and just doing life together. And then lastly, like this SoFi event, the Barnabas Associates program is doing four events this year outside of the summits where we just get to go. And some of it's fun. Um, some of it will be service oriented coming alongside some of the ministries that Barnabas has engaged with over the years. And so, um, yeah, I just, I have an ask of you that don't leave this place today without Come in and finding me, I'd love to hand you a business card, put you in um, contact with me, whether it's somebody that you know or, or somebody that you just came to mind while you were watching that video that goes, oh man, I so-and-so would, would benefit from being a part of this. I'd love to buy him coffee or a meal and, and just connect with them. So without further ado, Mr. Russ Klein. Great, thank you, Austin. You know, we were talking about the summit, and we wanted to laugh and have some fun around the tables. And that was fun. Um, and you people who won, um, I think I took a picture of your table. You're invited to our house for dinner. Uh, and so hopefully, yeah, Mark and Trish, you've been there already, but hopefully the rest of you can join us. But um, we hope that you have some time to meet people around your table. This is our, our quarterly summit. And uh, we're thrilled tonight, not only that you're in the room, but we're thrilled about the four organizations that we'll be presenting tonight. We're thrilled to have Dr. Gail Beebe with us to challenge us and encourage us. It's just a good night. It's also going to be an opportunity for you to meet and connect with people that are in the room. Um, that's what this is about. And Barnabas, you know, Austin talked about the purpose of Barnabas, and you may be here as a guest, and you're like, I, 
you know, I heard a little bit over here. I'm not really sure what this is all about, but it's, it's really simple. Um, we want to connect people to kingdom opportunities. And we do that from a platform of inviting organizations to come and present what God is doing in them and through them. And then they issue an invitation to you to respond. This book is kind of our, our guidebook for the day. If you don't have one, we have a couple of extras up here. If you don't have one at your table, but um, we'll direct you to different pages in the book. Every organization that's presented, uh, that's presenting, will have a page in there. And there's actually a response form. And after every presentation, we're going to give you a minute to complete that form. You tear that out, and old school, you put it in the basket outside the door. We also have an app, and there's instructions on how to do that on our app, but you can do that electronically on the app, and then information will get to the ministry. But the goal tonight, I mean, what makes me happy is when people in this room get excited about what God's doing, and you're invited to be a part of it. And the prayer tonight is that God would nudge you, would prompt you. Sometimes he might even convict you. Um, and tonight we're focused on these four organizations that we're excited about. They've been through a process of interviews and applying, and we've been walking with them and talking about this presentation, and they're here re ready to go. And our job as a community is to respond. Because, why? Because every one of us in this room, we have something that we can bring. We have something we can offer to the kingdom. Not, not money, it's not writing a check. Sometimes that's easy. We want to challenge you to use your time and your talent and your network to help build God's kingdom. So we're excited about tonight. There will be a break um, after our first two uh, presenters, and we'll have time. You can use the restrooms out there. But I really want to encourage you to kind of um, dive in, follow along with us in the book. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to introduce our very first uh, ministry. Father, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you that we can laugh, uh, compete a little bit, get to know people in the room and around the tables. Uh, just thank you for the privilege of us being in this space as a community. I also thank you for the associate program and for what's happening uh, with this group. And as we're challenging younger leaders just to embrace the ideals and the vision of Barnabas, and thank you for what's already happening and what is to come. Thank you for Austin's leadership in that. And Father, tonight we just, um, we, we humbly come before you and we ask you to, to challenge us and to speak clearly to us in the way that we can hear you. Because I believe that there's something for each and every person in the room tonight. That is not uh, a coincidence that they're here in this room.